If Thailand is on your travel list, this video is for you. We have a form where you can request personalized award search tutorials for free at geobreezetravel.com slash requests. We get a ton of requests for how to fly to Thailand. It's one of the trickier destinations to do with points since there are no direct flights from the USA, but we can still help you find some great flight deals. My name is Julia and I am the founder of GeoBreeze Travel and I personally get about $100,000 worth of travel every year for approximately 90% off by using points and miles. And we typically save our clients more than $30,000 in travel in the first six months of working with our team. And we wanna provide you with a clear path to luxury travel with these step-by-step -step tutorials too. So let's get started with how to find all of the different flight options over to Bangkok. Thailand is one of the more challenging destinations to reach with points, and here's why. If we look for different routes on flightconnections.com, there are no direct flights from Bangkok to the United States, and there's definitely nothing from smaller Thailand airports like Phuket or Krabi or Chiang Mai or anything like that. So today we're just going to focus on ways to get to Bangkok, and if you wanted to get from the US to Bangkok, you are going to have to go through a different Asian airport, like maybe something in Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, or something else. There is this direct flight over to Vancouver, Canada with Air Canada. Availability is sparse, so we're going to skip that one for now. And I'm going to walk you through some of the examples for airlines to search where I think you're going to have the most luck finding availability for business class flights over to Bangkok. If you are looking to fly to Thailand last minute, I would recommend starting your search with United Airlines. All you need to do here is go to united.com, click one way, book with miles, flexible dates, and then type in your departure airport and your destination, which is Bangkok. I would leave it at flexible dates, either this month or the following month. And then I'm just gonna search for one adult in business class for now. Then go ahead and click find flights. And I know this date will have passed by the time that you see this video, but you can see that there are quite a few different saver space dates available last minute. But as we search further out in the calendar, not as much saver space. It's going to be 170,000, 200,000 plus points in order to fly from San Francisco over to Thailand, which is not what we are looking for. We would prefer something that's more like this 110,000 point price. It is fully in business class from San Francisco through Taipei into Bangkok with Eva Airlines. And the nice thing when you find something on United is you can probably find it with some other alliance partners as well. For example, let's look for this route with Air Canada, where we're going to search the exact same date and route from San Francisco over to Bangkok on September 15 and click search. However, even though it is available on United with Saver Space, it's not available on Air Canada. It's always good to check, but it's not always promised that you can find it on Air Canada's website for cheaper. Let's try one more. I'm going to search for this on Avianca's site as well, which is lifemiles.com slash fly slash find. And then I'm going to change the search to be with Star Alliance flights. Do one way from San Francisco over to Bangkok. And I'm just going to search for one person in business class around September 15. Then go ahead and click search. And here it looks like it's just economy, but you have to click into each of these to see which ones are actually available in business class. And this first one has something available from San Francisco over to Taipei in United Polaris, and then Taipei over to Bangkok in Eva Airways. And for both of these in total, usually this would add this up for me, but doing the math myself, this is about 90,000 points plus $45 in taxes and fees, which is a little bit of a savings versus what United is charging. Also, this can just depend on what kind of points you have, because if you have Chase or Built points, you can transfer those over to United. Or if you have Amex points, Built points, Capital One points, City points, or Wells Fargo points, you can transfer those over to Avianca. So it might also just depend on what kind of points you have, and let that determine which of these redemptions you go for. But that's just one way that you can search for flights over to Thailand. Let's move on to our next one. Are you enjoying these types of videos? If yes, please let me know. 
click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel for even more points and miles tips every week. Up next, let's discuss probably one of the most reliable ways to find award space to Thailand, even if you need four or more seats. Also, you won't find these results in most search tools like Seats.Arrow. Singapore Airlines is one of my favorite airlines, both in terms of actually flying on their product and searching their website for award availability over into Asia. They don't show up on results for tools like Seats.Arrow or PointMe or anything like that due to something with their technology and API, which is a little bit annoying because you have to search them separately, but also a little bit advantageous because that means fewer people are finding these award space and you probably have a better chance of finding something. So if you wanted to go over to Thailand, let's do an example from Newark, New Jersey. And then we're gonna search into Bangkok and this would be better if you have multiple people traveling or if you are traveling really far out. Whereas United is better if you're doing more of a last minute trip. So let's search around first week of August for one person in business class, then click search. Now, it looks like there's plenty of award space, but it's all advantage rates. So ideally we would be able to find some saver space for 111.5 thousand points per person one way. If you book the advantage rate, you do get the option for a complimentary stopover in Singapore each way of your trip. And if you find saver space, you can get a complimentary stopover one way on the round trip. Scrolling through from Newark over to Bangkok, there's not a lot of saver space. You'd have to click back pretty far in order to find some. But Singapore is one of my favorites to search because if you are okay with the advantage rate and you're like, I just need four tickets or something like that, it's not too difficult to find that. Let's do a search for four people here. And with Singapore Airlines, I will often search from JFK, Newark, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. I would also search from Houston in the past, but that route I think is getting nixed this year. But if you have multiple people traveling and you're okay with paying a little bit more for these business class tickets so that you can all sit together on the same business class flight and you want a really nice flight experience, highly suggest searching on Singapore Airlines. And they also will accept transfer partners from almost everyone. Amex, Capital One, Chase, City, everybody except for Built. If you have Capital One, I would recommend using them. And then Amex next. Upgraded Points says that it takes one to two days with Amex. I've found that it's been a little bit faster with Capital One and Amex lately. Haven't tried it with City. And Chase has been a bit slow. They've been more like one to two days whenever clients are transferring over stuff to Singapore Airlines. But still a great option if you are looking to fly through Singapore into Bangkok from different regions, especially the East Coast. Another airline program where we find award space for clients all the time that does not show up on different search aggregator tools is Cathay Pacific. And so here you would just make an account with CathayPacific.com, log in, and click Redeem Flights. I mostly use this from LAX or JFK, but they do have other airports like San Francisco that you could search from as well. But here, let's search from LAX over to Bangkok. And these are going to route through Hong Kong into other destinations in Asia. We're just going to search for one person for now. And once again, this tends to be better for finding flights further out, but sometimes they have last minute space as well. Go ahead and click redeem flights. Cathay has also gotten very strict with all of the human verification things, finding birds. I know a couple of people have gotten locked out of Cathay. So just keep that in mind because they don't have an award calendar or anything. So you do have to go through verification steps each time. And if you hit it too hard, your account might get paused. But here we see that there is nothing available from Los Angeles to Bangkok on August 4th, but we do have something on the 3rd or the 6th where on the 3rd, this one doesn't look like it's actually operated by Cathay Pacific. It's operated by Japan Airlines. And then the one on the 6th is also operated by a partner airline of Thin Air. But if we scroll over a few more days, there's plenty of availability the following week of August 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, etc. And this is what we're looking for. LAX through Hong Kong into Bangkok for 110,000 Cathay Pacific miles per person, one way in business class, 
plus about 1300 Hong Kong dollars. And that's not very much in taxes or fees at all. That's about $174 US. If you want to move points over to Cathay Pacific, you can use Amex points, Build points, Capital One, or City. I would recommend Built or City because they move almost instantly according to upgraded points, but I tend to move my Amex points over to Cathay, and each time it's been pretty fast. Some people have reported one to seven days, but anecdotally from my experience, Amex is pretty fast too. If you wanted to search from the East Coast, they've got pretty good availability from JFK as well. So let's search from JFK over to Bangkok. Let's search that first week of August and then click redeem flights. Here we see there's nothing available on the 6th, but there is availability on the 8th. And this is from JFK through Hong Kong into Bangkok. And it actually says that there's no business class, but there is first class availability for 154,000 points, which is crazy good if you want to fly Cathay Pacific first class. If you love free resources that let you maximize your points, Check out geobreezetravel.com slash quiz. There, you will find a free short quiz that will point you to the best resources depending on whether you are trying to earn more points, redeem your points, or something else. And by taking the free quiz, you'll also get access to the free Points 101 course. This is a fantastic resource for anybody just getting started with points and miles. Next up, let's talk about another Star Alliance airline, but one that you are going to need to search separately. There is another Star Alliance partner that has pretty good availability over to Thailand, and that's ANA. But for this one, I would recommend searching it separately because they will often be a bit stingy with their own award space where it won't show up with partner airlines like United or Air Canada or Avianca or anything like that. So what you would do here is log into ANA, click on Award Reservation, and Round Trip. That's another tricky thing with ANA is you have to be able to find round trip availability if you only find one way. Most of the time you won't be able to book it unless it's also available on a partner airline. So here let's go ahead and search for San Francisco over to Bangkok once again. And I'm just going to pick some dates that are still pretty close in. Let's do September 25th, returning in the first week of October. I always recommend checking this checkbox which says compare seat availability plus or minus three days. We're just going to search for one person in business class for now. Then go ahead and click search. And so ANA will tell you which days have different seats available, but be warned, a lot of this is waitlist space, which I also don't recommend jumping on. So let's try the 25th and the 2nd and then click next. And here we see the required mileage for one person round trip is 132,000 miles which is not bad at all. But like I thought, a lot of these flights are going to be waitlisted. We do have this flight on the return that is not waitlisted. This is from Bangkok to Narita, Narita over to San Francisco, operated by ANA Business Class all the way through. But it looks like nothing for the outbound. Let's try a different date and see if we can find something there. Instead of the 25th, let's move our date a couple of days over to the 27th and try again. And here on the 27th, there are a couple of days that are not waitlisted. So this is what you're looking for, where if it grays out all the waitlisted ones, ANA will automatically put you on the flight that's not waitlisted, which is exactly what you want. But it's an economy class for the long flight over from San Francisco over to Tokyo, which is not what we want. So a and can be a little bit tricky with finding the award space that you want where you have to keep trying different dates and make sure that you can find something that's in business class all the way through, both for the outbound and the return. And then it'll be about 136,000 points plus $588 with taxes and fees and that's for the round trip. Another tricky thing about a and is that you will need Amex points in order to transfer over to them. They don't accept Chase, Capital One, City, or Built. And another rough thing about ANA is it takes two to three days for stuff to transfer over. So you have to find the availability, which is tricky in the first place with ANA. But then you move over your Amex points. You pray for two to three days that the award space does not disappear. And then you check your ANA account a couple days later. And once the points post, 
then you can go ahead and book the flight that you found. On occasion, people have reported that they call ANA's customer service and ask to put the flight on hold, saying that their points are in transit and that they're on the way. If you get a particularly nice customer service agent, they might put it on hold for you, but your miles may vary. It's not promised. Sometimes they'll just be like, eh, it's kind of the roll of the dice. So that's why I don't book on ANA too much unless I see a lot of availability where if one date disappears, maybe I have a backup date. But for this particular example where it's pretty rough to find anything over from San Francisco through Japan into Bangkok, I don't know if that would be the play that I would do. If you're in the market for a new card so that you can travel to Thailand, but you're not sure what card to get, check out our free credit card consultation form at geobreezetravel.com slash consultations. We will send you a personalized recommendation based on your particular goals, budget, and lifestyle. Many of the links that we send out through the free consults and GeoBreeze Travel website are actually referral links from our students in the Points Accelerator, rather than our own affiliate links. If you would like for us to send out your links in the future so that you can earn more referral points too, join the Points Accelerator waitlist at geobreezetravel.com slash waitlist to be one of the first ones to hear about when we open back up for enrollment. Now, just because most of the airlines that we have discussed so far, like ANA, Singapore, and Cathay Pacific, don't show up on search tools, does not mean that the search tools are useless for Thailand. But even when you use them, you might need to modify your searches a little bit like this. So now that we've gone through a few different examples of how to find flights to Thailand using airlines that don't show up in the search aggregator tools, is there a way to actually use Seats.Arrow or the other tools to find these flights? Sometimes, for different airlines. Let's go over an example with American Airlines. It's not as straightforward as usual where you just go from the US over to the exact airport you want. I would click Explore, then American Airlines, from North America over to Asia, then click Full Year. And if in the search bar, we type Bangkok, we're gonna see there's not really anything. There's just one that shows up for Dallas-Fort Worth in August, but there's a trick to this. Under the departure airports, select all of the different airports where you would be okay positioning over to that airport to fly into Asia. So I'm gonna select everything except for Hawaii and Canada. And if you're trying to find flights into Bangkok, with American Airlines, most of the good award availability is going to be with Japan Airlines. So for arrival airports, I would filter this down to Narita and Haneda. This gives us a smaller list of airports to actually check for Bangkok. Even though here, if we were to search for Bangkok, Seats.Arrow isn't going to capture every single day and every single route, but this gives us a good starting point. So now that we filtered to continental U.S. departure airports and Japanese arrival airports, we see there's Chicago to Haneda on August 11, Seattle to Narita on August 5th, San Francisco to Narita on August 6th, and a few different ones for LAX. And I would just look at the ones that have direct flights into Japan so that you're not bouncing all over the place if possible. I'd also go for the ones where the price point is 60,000 points. Let's start with this Seattle to Narita one. I would go to aa.com, click one way and redeem miles. Then I would search from Seattle into Bangkok. And then we're just gonna set a date that is further out in the calendar and click search. I'm kind of just going to ignore the dates that seats.arrow recommended. And I'm instead just using seats.arrow to figure out what the good airports to search from are. But if you're not even into positioning flights and you're just like, I really just need to go from my particular airport, you can skip all of that and just go straight to American Airlines and see if there's anything from your airport. So now that I've searched from Seattle over to Bangkok, I'll click on the calendar, click show all classes and filter to business or first class. And here we can see the best dates to fly in August would be August 5th or August 6th, where each one has flights for 70,000 miles, plus about $20 in taxes and fees. Alternatively, July 5th has a similar price point. So that's how you filter on the best days where there are different deals with American Airlines. Let's see what's going on on August 5th. Filter to business class lowest. 
And this one has a lot of those different bouncing around airports where you're going from Seattle to Narita, over to Osaka, then over to Bangkok. So if you're okay with that and you want to explore a few different places in Japan, it's only 70,000 American Airlines miles to do that. If we want to look at the itinerary on the 6th, that one is a little bit more straightforward. It goes from Seattle to San Francisco to Tokyo over to Thailand. That one's 70,000 points plus $20 in taxes and fees with one seat left as well. So that's how I would use a hybrid approach of Seats.Aero with the functionality on American Airlines. Since there are no direct flights into Thailand, that means that it is a prime use case for booking itineraries that include a complimentary stopover. And we have another example of that coming up next. It is on one of the newest and most luxurious airlines, so you won't want to miss this next tutorial. And if you want to level up your points game even more, we have a couple of options for you. The first one is with the GeoBreeze Travel Patreon, which you can join starting at just $5 per month through patreon.com slash GeoBreeze Travel. Every month, we prepare personalized step-by-step -step tutorials for the routes that our members request. We also provide open forum group coaching where you can ask any questions that you have about points, miles, and credit cards in general. And we talk through some of the tips and tricks that I'm not really supposed to mention on social media. And if you're looking to get even more free travel with points, and you are a business owner or individual who spends $100,000 per year or more on expenses, check out our one-on-one -on -one points portfolio management service. We typically save our clients somewhere between $30,000 to $60,000 in travel in the first six to 12 months of working with our team. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, book a free intro chat with us at geobreezetravel.com slash intro call to learn more. Okay, let's cover how to fly to Thailand with a complimentary stopover on Starlux. Another kind of hybrid example of how I would use Seats.Aero is when booking flights over to Thailand with Alaska, and I'm going to show an example for how to do this with a complimentary stopover as well. So what you'll do is go to Seats.Aero, click Explore, and select Alaska, then show flights from North America over to Asia. In the search bar, if we just search for flights over to Bangkok and sort by business class lowest, we have a couple of options from Seattle over to Bangkok. But there's actually a lot more award space than what Seats.Aero is showing. What I would do is start with filtering the departure airports to anywhere that you want to fly from. Let's make this fast and say, I just want to fly from LAX. There are a lot of flights from LAX through Taipei. And I think there's also going to be a lot of flights from Taipei into Bangkok. So what I would do here is write down a couple of days where you're okay to fly from Los Angeles into Taipei. So let's say that you wanted to try a couple of these. Let's try the first one available on July 8th, 2025. You'll go to Alaska Airlines, click one way from Los Angeles over to Taipei first. You wanna find each flight individually before you try to put together a multi-route. And here on Seats.Aero, this is July 8th. Then we'll click find flights. And according to Seats.Aero, there should be a flight from Los Angeles to Taipei for 75,000 points in business class. But if we search through all of these different options, everything we're seeing is 175,000. So this is why I always recommend trying to find the flight physically on the airline first before you move any points over or do anything else because the search aggregator tools are not perfect. Let's try a different day. The next one through Taipei is on July 29, 2025. So we can change our search, say July 29, then click find flights. And here we do see that 75,000 point price where it is direct from LAX to Taipei in Starlux Airlines, which I hear fantastic things about. So then we'll write down Los Angeles to Taipei on July 29. And then we wanna find flights from Taipei over to Bangkok a few days after that, let's say August 2. Then go ahead and click find flights. And this looks like pretty good saver space where from Taipei over to Bangkok is 50,000 points and it's operated by Starlux as well. Now, it's not actually going to cost 120,000 miles to do both legs where you're like 
Uh, is it 75,000 plus 50,000? That's like 125,000. It's not gonna cost that much. Once you've found each of these legs separately, click change your search then click multi-city. Now we're gonna search on the first leg from Los Angeles to Taipei and put it all together. This one we found on July 29. And the second leg is from Taipei over to Bangkok. And this one we saw was available on August 2nd. Once you've put it all together in a multi-city, go ahead and click find flights. And it's only 85,000 points for both legs in partner business class. One thing to note, Alaska Airlines puts this little chair icon of its mixed class where part of it's in economy, part of it's in business class, avoid those. So here we have the direct flight from LAX to Taipei, Taipei over to Bangkok for only 85,000 points plus $36 in taxes and fees. There's also some options that has an extra positioning flight like here. It goes from SNA over to San Francisco, then San Francisco to Taipei, then Taipei over to Bangkok. And that gives you the hint that you could do this whole search starting from San Francisco to Taipei if you wanted to do that. But if you want to book this flight, then you just select the first option, LAX to Taipei, Taipei to Bangkok, click add to cart, use your Alaska miles and book it from there, just like it is a normal plane ticket. I hope you found those tutorials useful. Let me know in the comments what destination I should cover next. And also, please subscribe to the GeoBreeze Travel newsletter if you would like to request a free personalized tutorial for the route that you want to fly to. In the meantime, if you enjoyed these tutorials, I think you will enjoy this video next.